You're probably wondering why I'm taking you away from your normal daily routine of brush your teeth, go to a place in which you hate just to absorb yourself in chronic mental masturbation for the next couple hours before you go back to sleep, take a shit, repeat. Uh, and that is because Necromunda Underhive Wars does have a other side to it, and that other side would be, of course, the gang wars, the wars in which you kind of are contributing a little bit more than what you would consider to be outside the story. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, the story only follows a linear path of about three separate gangs, and they all kind of have their own personal melodrama going on throughout the story. Here, you kind of get to make up what the hell your crew is, what they do, what's their tactic consistently, and of course, where they go in a general sense. Now, this being said, this isn't as liberating as I think it should be. I think the gang wars should have kind of monopolized off of the idea of I get to make my own gang followed by kind of having my own miniature story going on with them, but see, that's not the case. In the gang wars, what you're doing is you're just going from level to level of the underhive, setting up a base real quick, and then following it up with just doing enemy operations against each other against an AI. I mentioned the multiplayer, but the multiplayer on Xbox is about as barren as a pig that has been used by the farmer. And sadly, this leads to just playing the operations, excluding now the skirmishes and uh, exhibitions, which are two other sides to the gang wars that I just simply never got to experience because people don't fucking play it. Um... You know, that being said, the gang wars debatably are still the best part about this game. Um, the gang wars, high customiz customization in your characters, um, customization on what group you run. So you have anywhere from three groups if you just buy the base game and just the base game, uh, and five groups if you buy the two extra side DLCs like I did. I chose Kodor, because Kodor is metal as fuck. Uh, you could also have chosen the Vansars, which the Vansars are like these radioactive, um, frail, nerdy technomancers, really, who um, you know figured out how to do some crazy shit with radioactive chemicals, but it's at the cost of like their body and sometimes their mind in the lore. Um, this is why they have to wear like these really strange looking custom suits. Otherwise, they are, they're so frail and brittle that sneezing on them would cause them to have the measles and plague, followed by hepatitis A, B, but thankfully excluding C. Um, personally, also, I will tell you just from my personal strategies in going about games like this. Uh, How's Kodor? Spreads over more than a million worlds. The burning light of its imperial cult reaching even the most remote places. Even in the eternal darkness of the Underhive. Believers. Redemptionists. Unwavering fanatics. Cordors might be bone-picking, scrap-herding paupers, but their zeal makes them brutal enemies and quite useful pawns. All the way. Every other house is fucking stupid. House Corridor knows damn well what universe it's in, and it, uh, it flashes that shit off. Uh, they... They're definitely the faction that uh, is more Warhammer oriented, uh, even going as far as to be still religious psychotic zealots as the lore of this universe kind of promotes to be. Um, which if you know anything about the lore of this universe, that's actually kind of like a, not a key factor, it's not important, but it does contribute to the psychology of the world you're in and why people are in this situation in the first place. 
And of course, this is more of a topic I'm going to touch upon in the third installment of the video uh, review series. But, for now, we're just going to be talking about Gang Wars. And, now, this game could have gone so many directions with the Gang Wars, but it really tried to focus in more on a PvP aspect, which in my personal opinion was a very dumb idea. Um, this game really, it already takes a long ass time to get through an operation. It takes a very long time to get through the fucking story. Longer than it should. Why the fuck would I want to now play with some stoner and or some 12 year old? Who are getting, who is getting verbally abused by their alcoholic chain smoking mother. No. See, I don't want to waste my fucking time like that. So why would I want to play PvP in the first place? And I think that's why the PvP in this game is so barren as it is. Secondly, um, there's a thing in the PvP where I kind of realized it hints at the uh, you know, ability to steal off of other players, which in a game like this in which I can customize, create, and then proceed to build up my characters to extremes, uh, upgrade customiz customization is fucking real in this game. Um, why would I want to play against somebody who may have figured out some extreme meta to completely buff up my playstyle? Uh, and then steal all my weapons and giggle his ass off on the way to the store to sell it all off because he probably has better gear in the first place if he's played this game longer than I have. So that is a, an extreme deterrent, you know. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens? This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass, Larry. Something about that. Well, back on to another positive of the game. The upgrades in the system and the combat of the actual gang wars. The combat of the actual gang wars, I will debate, is probably the most functional part about this game. Um, the AI is still equally as batshit as it was in the single player. Except in the single player... It didn't have a sense of self-preservation, as for now, it actually really does. Uh, the AI will try to run away from you sometimes, or get out of a situation in which it acknowledges it's completely fucked. And that's pretty cool. Um, you know, upgrading your characters to extremes. Um, you know, I liked the House Kodor, because House Kodor really made extremely offensive tactics. Uh, getting into your face is one of them. Uh, they mainly mained melee attack strikes uh, with you know balanced AP for that style and heavy hitting melee weapons. Um, but also you know the characters that they use for um, shooting aren't completely nerfed or null and void either. In fact, they play very well into their faction, better than most other factions in my opinion. Um, but of course that's a personal grievance, you know, I'm gonna probably get somebody in the comments to say, nah man, the Goliaths, if you don't go with the Goliaths, you just don't know how to play the game. But anyways, um, so definitely for me, pick of the day, House Kodor. Uh, I will, when I first actually got into this game, I didn't know anything about, um, Underhive, or the Hive cities of the Warhammer 40k universe, no idea. And what happened was I actually wound up looking into uh, the lore to figure out what the hell any of this was about. And so, um, House Kodor is actually the religious lunatics of the religious fanatics of the Underhives. Where they are still operating off of the ideals and grounds of the uh, Imperium. And it's even believed that really majority of their contracts, missions, and what they are doing is all contributing to the benefit of the Imperium. So they're they're essentially uh, they're not they're sure as shit are not vigilantes. They are some fucking assholes. But 
they are operating in the sense of more indirect governmental assistance. They're essentially like uh, paramilitary operations group, you know, working outside of their own domestic country, if you will. And, you know, that's actually really fucking cool. But, of course, you know, they're all unaware of it. They're, they're essentially the equivalency of an anti-communist militia in South America or some crazy shit. Now, when it comes to this game's uh, sense of meaning uh, for the gang wars, there is none. Uh, I'll be 100% fucking real. This game doesn't really change up the missions at all. What you are seeing on your screen is what you get when it comes to the gang wars. Uh, I put, I want to say, up to like 12, maybe 14 hours into the gang wars. Uh, mind you, the gang wars are still a long shootout, long fights, but at least, you know, the combat is a little cooperative on the sense that I, ha I can build up a strategy and it will work. Um, a lot more than I'd like it to. Even in the harder difficulties of the un underhive gang wars, uh, I felt like at a certain point I was just overpowered. Uh, I, my team was just godlike in comparison to the rest of the map. Um, because, you know, the, the tactic of the AI sometimes is just very silly or very kamikaze, you know, in between. And, you know, all you're seeing on the screen is that we're just picking up shit, we're looting shit. Maybe every now and then you'll get a mission for kind of like those blood sport arenas. But that's about it. You know, and then there's the kind of like, I don't... <coughs> there we go. It's not a boss fight, you know, it's not anything extravagant or amazing, but it's essentially all the gangs show up to try to steal um, this architect, or architect box, and then fuck off with it, you know, the moment you pick, you know, it's funny, that that is the only operation that I'll say is I actually changed up my tactic where I bum rushed that box, had one guy bum rush that box and just run the fuck away with it. And uh, the, you essentially win it at the gate because uh, that's the only loot on that map. You know, in comparison to the other missions where there's a whole diversity of loot, you know, depending on your play style, depending on how ballsy you want to play this map, or if you're just playing House Kodor and want to kill everyone on the map before you steal, which is Kodor's fucking key tactic. Um,. You know, it, unlike those missions, the capturing the architect box is the only mission where I actually said, you know, alright, this guy can leave with this, everyone else stays, and we still won. We demolished. Not a fucking soul in sight. And, and that's kind of, after that is when I realized, and I did that on hard. Um, after that, I sort of realized that this game... It doesn't really have all that much beyond that, you know, because I kept playing after that. I had two different separate houses of House Kodor, the Deadbeat Zombies and uh, Corpse Kriegus. Or, uh, Kriegus Corpus, that's what I named them, uh, because I actually didn't know anything about House Kodor. When I initially started playing, I just thought these dudes were like the bums of the Underhive united together. So I thought Deadbeat Zombies was a cool name, but once you figure out that they are kind of, you know, psychotic religious zealots, like the story would promote this type of behavior, once you figure that out, you sort of kind of want to tilt them more to a military-esque ideal uh, with just, like, bum clothing, you know. Uh, and thankfully, because you can put on a, a gas, mask sim gas mask similar to um, the Krieg, Krieg Corpse, uh, that's kind of what I named them to. And I really had a lot of fun actually doing that. Um, so, you know, what this game lacks in story does give you opportunity to be personally creative. And I really enjoyed running around the Underhive, cleansing it of all life, and purging it of all the infidels to our great ruler. 
I had a lot of fun doing that, but I still, as a person, I feel like this would have been a whole lot more worth playing if there was a sense of story. It didn't even have to be some shit that, you know, it, it ends at a certain point. In fact, I would almost prefer that not to be a thing, but I at least would want to feel like I'm progressing at something other than how much shit can I steal in this one part of the map. Once I beat this part of the map, all I'm going to do is go to a separate part of the map, start up a new base, and then steal everything out of that part of the map. You know, it, it's the definition of fucking insanity uh, if you really want to dedicate a lot of time into this game. Uh, you know, that being said, it's still fun. Uh, definitely, it, it's a good game if, you know, you don't have as much time as you'd want to pour into a, a turn-based strategy game. I definitely would recommend playing Gang Wars here. Just because you would, at, at the very least, you know, yeah, each mission's an hour, but it's an hour odds are you're going to enjoy so, take that as you will. Um, so, you're probably wondering, where does this leave this game off? I want to say the Gang Wars, the Underhive Wars, this definitely lands a solid 3 out of 5, 3.5 out of 5, if you want to be really um, courteous on how entertaining the Gang Wars can be. Um... But this being said, you know, it lacks that story. It lacks the sense that I actually matter at all. And, you know, yeah, I guess you could boil down that, you know, well, the point of the board game was just that. You know, who can steal the most shit? Who can kill who off? You know, the whole premise of the Warhammer 40K game is we aren't, we haven't won until we annihilate their fucking existence into the soil. You know, but with this it's just, it, I feel like all I'm doing is, it's a looter shooter, but I'm by myself. And if I want to participate in that type of masturbation, I would definitely switch up my means. So, you know, if they are going to actually make any improvements on this game in the future, which, you know, I a part of me thinks they will do, they've actually knocked out a few of the glitches throughout the game. Um, one of the key glitches that I noticed playing Gang Wars was a light glitch, but a part of me thinks I was very lucky, uh, is during the loading after a success, I would assume that the AI also would throw a hissy fit and flip the fucking chessboard, because what would happen is it, the game would lag and crash on Xbox, mind you, and then I would reload in praying to God that the game still understood that I won. <laughs> Which, thankfully, it did. The one time it didn't. One time when I first started playing this game, it actually didn't and completely fucked me out of an entire mission and I had to play it again. That was bullshit. But one time out of all the missions that I had played, that's actually not that bad, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, definitely take this as you will. The gang wars of this game were extremely fun. The upgrades are basically to the max. Uh, you know, I could upgrade and sp upgrade and specialize a unit into almost anything conceivable for that unit, and that's actually kind of surprising how much detail they went into with the uh, upgrading system. Um, also, what you know, the customization of the characters definitely makes my characters and my personal feelings towards them actually feel unique and I actually would get pissed off if one of the AIs decided they really needed one of my guys to die. Which, you know, that's a thing. Sometimes if the AI feels like it's not going to win, it will put up a fucking hell of a fight. Which is really fun, by the way. I, I'm not knocking that at all. That's fucking necessary if you're going to want to play a game like this. You know, another thing this game had done right, you know, the art design. Art design in this game was done really well. You know, another thing that I think I should probably add is I don't think this game is worth $40. Uh, I'd tell you to, you know, if you could buy the full game, DLC is included for maybe 25 yeah, there right, you go for it, because it's a fun game. It's fun to kind of crank out. It's really interesting, it's really enthralling, but at the same time, this most certainly is not a $40 game. Um, 
Thank God it's not 60. At least, you know, the developer fucking knew what they made. You know, this game wasn't prime gold or nothing, but they made a good game. Um, if you definitely enjoy yourself turn-based strategies, I can also really recommend this game. So, uh, yeah, in my conclusion, this game definitely lands itself at around, you know, 3 to 3.5 out of 5. Uh, in conjunction with, of course, the last video score, which was a 2, uh, this game kind of lands at uh, a 5 out of 10. And, mind you, that's not terrible, but it's not meaningful either. This game could have went a lot of directions, especially especially with the gang war. I can't let that up. They could have really have gone really far above and beyond with the gang wars. But I think they poured a lot of their time into the story. They poured a lot of time into the PvP element, which isn't even used. And it wound up, like, um, undermining what I think this game really should have focused on. Um, so, definitely, this game did do something, though, in the end, very much cool correctly and very much right and I'm going to get that on the third installment and the final installment of this game's full on review and what this game in the end did really do right. Um, that being said, please feel free to tune in for next time. I doubt I'm getting anybody because right now YouTube sure as shit is not advertising any new uh, any new creators. So, therefore, I can go fuck myself. i got to come up with a way to advertise this channel. And, secondly, I'm actually going to work on another game review. Maybe, perhaps, playthrough. More like game review, just because it is a long fucking game. But a good one at that. So, feel free to tune in next time. Now, go back to parenting your children chronic mental masturbation, and or falling back asleep and praying to God you don't wake up again in your earth and continuous realm of perpetual nihilism and self-hatred, because here we are, America, 2020. This is Carnage, and I'll see you next time.